Good evening. First of all, thank you all so much, uh, Raul and Ana Lorena, for emceeing. Let's give them a round of applause for the great job that they're doing tonight. Uh, my thanks as well to Roger Rocha, uh, your great president, and also to uh, Brent Wilkes, your executive director, and to the entire LULAC board of directors that I know hail from throughout the United States. Let's give them a big round of applause for their good work. I also want to thank uh, Secretary Acosta for joining us this evening and for his leadership. Uh, my best wishes as well to Governor Rosello of Puerto Rico. I know that he's going to have a few remarks momentarily. Uh, and I also want to congratulate all of tonight's honorees, the ones that have been recognized and the ones that I know we're going to recognize later in the program. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a special shout out to Rosa and Angie, the hat ladies of San Antonio, for uh, a lifetime of tremendous service to the community in San Antonio, in Texas, and beyond. Uh, each of y'all, each of the honorees that are recognized this evening have set a wonderful example of service to the community, and the recognition is very well deserved. Finally, I'd like to commend uh, each and every one of you the members of the League of United Latin American Citizens, LULAC. Bienvenidos a San Antonio. Welcome to San Antonio. Now, y'all know that I used to be mayor of the city, and so I have to get this out of my system every now and then. Uh, although San Antonio can't technically claim to be the birthplace of LULAC, because that distinction belongs to Corpus Christi, Texas, I see we have some folks from Corpus who are here with us. All right, let's give Corpus their due. Let's give them a round of applause. Y'all are where it all started. Still, even though we're not the birthplace, I hope that y'all feel like this is your home away from home, a place that has always supported the organization that has been a kind of launching pad for a lot of its initiatives and certainly for its leadership, and we're very proud to have you. I'm very glad to be back in my hometown and to be here tonight with my wife, uh, Erica, who is here. Uh, just last week, Erica and I celebrated our 10-year anniversary. So I, I want to uh, officially wish her a happy anniversary. Uh, and I know that she still loves me because she still comes to these chicken dinners with me all the time. So over, the mu over much of the last three years, I had a chance to see our nation and to learn a lot about it. As Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President Obama, who I miss, by the way, as President, As Secretary of HUD, I had the chance to, over two and a half years, visit a hundred different communities in 39 states. Throughout our nation's life, America has often distinguished itself as the land of opportunity, a place where hard work was matched with a chance to reach one's dreams. And little by little, over the generations, that dream became more real for more folks. I saw in my travels very clearly that big dreams still exist everywhere. I also found, though, that for many folks, reaching those dreams has gotten tougher, even when they work hard. The question is, how do we create an America where everyone can succeed in this 21st century a time that presents new challenges and also new opportunities. To begin with, we need a vision for the future, a vision that recognizes that we can't give up on anyone. We need everyone's talents. if We want to compete against nations around the world that are sharp and innovative. In this 21st century, we know that brain power is the new currency of success. Those communities and those countries that cultivate it will thrive, and those that don't will be left behind. 
That means that we have to invest in public and higher education. It means that we have to commit ourselves to supporting lifelong learning for the four-year-old who can soak up information like a sponge in pre-K, to the mid-career worker who may be feeling the impact of growing automation in our economy. We need a vision that embraces immigrants, that understands how they replenish those values of faith and family and hard work that have propelled America forward over the years. In this vision, we need to write a new bottom line with corporate America, too. A new bottom line that says, I don't only want to hear about how big your profits were last quarter. Tell me about your profit sharing with employees. I don't care about the glossy pictures of workers on your website. Tell me about your paid family leave policy for those employees. A new bottom line that demands fair wages and decent health care and a safe workplace. In short, a new bottom line that works for all Americans and not just those at the very top. That is a vision for the future. Unfortunately, today in Washington and just down the road in Austin, we have too many politicians stuck in the past, peddling old ideas and old divisions, scapegoating immigrants instead of embracing them, making health care worse, not better, slashing educational opportunity for Americans who need it, giving polluters a green light left and right, and serving up tax cuts for the wealthy with trickle-down economics at the expense of the middle class and hardworking American families. There is no doubt that that's not a pretty picture. But that's where you come in. For 88 years, LULAC has been a tremendous force for good in our country. Decade after decade, you've helped to expand opportunity in America. Since the day of your founding in Corpus Christi in 1929, you've made good on your promise to make the American dream possible for the Latino community and well beyond. You're also no stranger to tough times or to tough battles. And we need your strength, your resilience, and your voice today more than ever. On immigration, on health care, on education, on our environment, and on criminal justice. On all of it, you have a critical role to play in making sure that we take the better path in the years to come. For when I think of the Latino community, I think of the fact that fully one quarter of Americans under the age of 18 are Latino. That the most common or modal age for non-Hispanic whites is 57. But for Latinos, it's 10. That means the Latino community has an enormous stake in our nation's future. I also think of folks like Fernando Rojas. Fernando grew up in Fullerton, California, the son of Mexican immigrants, his mother a seamstress, and his father a machine operator. A couple of summers ago, as he graduated co-valedictorian of Fullerton Union High, Fernando got accepted into all eight Ivy League schools. And in the fall of 2015, he started at Yale University. Fernando's story is an amazing one that speaks to the possibility of America. And the thing is that his kind of talent and potential is so much more common than we often give folks credit for. We can make the dreams of Fernando and so many others like him come true if as a nation we see the work of God in each person's face, if we refuse to give up on anyone, if we commit ourselves to care 
and to act if we persist with a vision that looks forward and if in the years to come instead of looking backward and trying to make America anything again we focus on the future then together we can make America better than ever. Thank you very much. Thank you.